have what I have. Sometimes the grass is not greener on the other side. Though. Yes, so the grass is greener where it's watered, not the other side. If you like, leave your grass. For I make known, for I make known to you, brethren, as touching the gospel, which was preached by me, that it is not after man. Who is this guy? Say, for I make known unto you. This is not blab. We saw Jesus and he sent us. All we are living is to create history enough to be a backup as a foundation to witness the things that we encountered. The words that God gave us to speak to a generation, we might not be able to communicate it effectively. They might not be able to receive it. So we just kept it in our heart and began to cook. Began to cook. The reason is because we know that that which God told us is true. But there is no history enough that we have created with God such that when we come and say such a thing, there will be a witness behind what we are saying. So instead of going about trying to tell people, please believe what I'm saying, men like Paul will go inside. Are you getting the point? He said, I I give you to know, I certify you that what I'm saying huh, as touching the gospel which is preached by me, that is not after men. It means that I, should I say this one? Okay, let me use another word. It means that pastoral training is good, but this is not what is received from pastoral training. Huh? Pastoral training as good as it is, is handed out. He said this one is as a result of an encounter. If you help me, say amen. amen. Foundation class is good. Including discipleship class is good. But this is not what we are talking about. Are you getting the point? Man went beyond what is taught in foundation class. Discipleship class. Bible school. Pastoral school. And all the schools. And then he heard from God. And many times, if you really hear from God, it will be too heavy for you to tell people. Have you heard from God? If you hear from God concerning your destiny, the things you are supposed to tell a generation, if you are quick to say it, you didn't hear well. Because many of the things you hear, you will be afraid to say it. You know you don't have stature now. You know you don't have sufficient history with God such that he can ride upon it and create a witness to testify that indeed what you heard and encountered is true. So what God does with such a man is that what you heard seven, ten years ago, you will not say it. He will keep, he will keep cooking it in your heart. The day will come. When you stand, things will happen. And people will now ask you, how did this happen? You will begin to teach them. Not because you wanted to teach, but because you have stayed with Jesus long enough that your life became a testimony to something that is a truth in the spirit. Now, it, is, it has now necessitated a teaching. A teaching that has now received stature because of witness. Eh? A witness that came about because you tarried in the place of history. And then you created something with God that can be a backup. When you appear, it is not just that you want to say something something is already flowing out of your life and then that thing that is flowing needed an explanation are you with me yes, something is evolving that is an avalanche and then that avalanche necessitates that there will be an explanation imagine peter talking about the outpouring of the holy ghost in, on the day of pentecost without anything having having happened you know is is rubbish it doesn't make sense are you getting a point to yes, Peter knows that scripture in the book of Joel. Does he not know it? It is not time to use that scripture. Some of the revelations you have in your book, keep it. Keep it. It's not time. You need to create history with Jesus. The problem is that if many people have revelation, they quickly share, they quickly share. It ends up in the head. Huh? And many times when the word that you spoke comes to test you, you cannot survive it. 